Hello brothers and sisters in Christ. This big issue that came out recently, I did talk to some of the brethren about um, the Antichrist challenge. And if you watched my videos when it first came out, it was almost promoting that all they had to do was say it. And I tried explaining to the brethren that it's much more than just saying it. So God put it on my heart to do a quick little study here, profess or confess. Okay. People need to learn the difference between professing something and actually confessing something. Confession comes from the heart. We've talked about this when it comes to the gospel. Okay, You confess repentance and belief to show it's coming from here. True confession. You're not just saying it. True confession comes from the heart. And when you ask God to save you, He looks at the heart and sees if those two things happen in the heart. And evidence of that after salvation, you have fruits meet for repentance and you're obeying the gospel. Okay. That's evidence to change life. So let's get into this. Uh, turn to Matthew chapter 20, 12, 34. Matthew 12, 34. Make sure you have your King James Bible, God's perfect written word. Okay. So Matthew 12, 34. It reads, O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You go over to Luke chapter 6, verse 45, you read this again. A good man out of the good treasures of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. And an evil man out of the evil treasures of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Now, brothers and sisters in Christ, I've tried to help, and I, I pray that this ministry has helped some of you when it comes to words have meaning. Okay? And that passage there, does it say, out of every word spoken, it comes from the heart? No. What is the word that God chose to use? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Not everything that comes out of this mouth is coming from here. But you listen long enough, and out of the abundance of the, the heart, the mouth speaks. So out of the abundance of the words that are coming out, you're going to find what comes from the heart and what's coming from up here. Okay? What's coming from the flesh. So, abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Let's go ahead and get into 1 John 4, 1. Now, are we going to find the word profess, or are we going to find the word confess? So John, 1 John 4, 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Hereby know we the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is in the world. Ye are of God, little children, and I have, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Now, stop there for a second. Was the word profess there or confess there? And see if I can move this over a little bit. Okay. Confess. Now, how do we know the difference between profess and confess? Let's keep reading here. Therefore, speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. Right? Out of the bonds of the heart, the mouth speaks. When you're professing something, it's just words that are coming out of your mouth. When you're confessing something, it's the heart speaking through the mouth. Therefore, speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. That means something's being spoken if, you, if you're going to be able to hear it. Okay. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Okay. The word there is confess. We're going to go over and do a word study on profess. Because people are getting in there and they're switching out confess for profession. Confession for profession. You know how we always say that there's a lot of professing 
Bible-believing Christians out there? Are we saying they're all Christians? No. We're saying they're professing to be Christians. Uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 3, we read this. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Spirit. Notice what the word it chooses to use there. It uses the word say. Okay? When you say something, it can be a confession or it can be a profession. Okay? A profession can become a confession when it's confirmed. But when it's just a profession, you don't know whether it's coming from here or here. The head. Okay? That's the whole point. As we get through here, you're going to learn that it follows works. When it talks about professions, there's got to be works afterwards so you can confirm that it's a confession, that it's coming from here and not here. Now, I'm reading from this because I go through a lot of scripture and it takes me a while to turn to, your, to the King James Bible, but I always encourage and I want you to have your King James Bibles out. You can pause the video and follow along. Okay? This is a King James Bible believing ministry. Okay. Uh, was it King James Bible believing God fearing ministries? So that last part is just as important as the first part. 1 Corinthians 12 3. If you want to turn there. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man. Okay, sorry, we read this one. No man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed. What we're learning from that verse there is the word say. Right? Uh, what's it talking about here? It's talking about confession. It's not just talking about words that come out of your mouth. It's talking about confession that comes from the heart. But not just confession. It's talking about how the Holy Spirit bears witness with your conscience, with your heart, your spirit. So when you're saying Jesus Christ is the Lord, Singular, capital L, Lord, the singular, only capital L, Lord, Lord of Lords. Okay, it's the Holy Spirit bearing witness. Okay, no one can say Jesus is accursed. God's not going to call Jesus accursed, God the Father. Okay, Jesus isn't going to call himself accursed. The Holy Spirit is not going to call himself accursed. So when you see someone curse Jesus Christ, call him accursed, it's not coming from the Holy Spirit. Okay. And no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but the, by the Holy Spirit. Once again, we see people that, oh, they try to use this as a test. Okay? When you look at the context, once again, say here is talking about confession. Remember, saying something can be a profession or a confession. Okay? This is talking about confession. It's got to come from the heart, and it's backed. We've already done a study. I'll get into completing that study about, is Jesus really your Lord? Capital L, Lord. Okay? If he is, you got to understand that a Lord judges. Okay, you're saying he's the capital L Lord, but do you have a changed life? Are you preparing yourself for the judgment seat of Christ? Doing everything you can for the Lord today? Changing your life? Cleaning up your life? Doing works for the Lord that are going to be judged? Okay. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 9 verse 8. Their tongue is as an arrow shot out, it speaketh deceit. One speaketh peacefully to his neighbor with his mouth, but in, his, but in heart he layeth his weight. His works, his actions are going to be different from what he's speaking from his mouth. His heart is different. See, this is evidence that you can say something, but your heart is saying something else. Uh, Matthew, Matthew 15, chapter 7. Ye hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy, prophesy of you, saying, This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honor me with their lips. They're saying, they're professing, but their heart is far from me. Here we see it again. I'm really going to drive this home, brothers and sisters in Christ, that you need to learn the difference between professing something and confessing something. Okay. 
And as we keep reading, you're going to find out that the works are what show the true heart, what's going on in the heart. We're reading things in here as we're going to keep going down right here. The next part, evidence of speaking in the heart. There's times that they speak here. You don't, they don't speak here. They're speaking here. And the evidence of what they're truly saying here is reflected by their actions and how they're living their life. That's what it means to try the spirits. Okay? Does their life back up what they're saying that it's coming from here? If their life doesn't back up what they're saying, it's coming from up here. They're just saying what people like, what I call PWCs, Polly want a cracker. You know, they're parroting what other people said. They say what they have to to make certain people happy. They say what they have to to deceive people purposely. They say what they have to so they can be part of their club that they like to be part of. It's not coming from down here. So evidence that speaking can be in the heart and not here, not coming out verbally, but their actions show it. Uh, Deuteronomy, 8, Deuteronomy 18.21 And if thou say in thine heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord hath not spoken? I just threw this one out there because it talks about how even God is saying that they're speaking in their heart. You can say something in your heart. 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 13 now Hannah, she spoke in her heart. Only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli thought she had been drunken. And you read that whole story. You can speak within your heart without voice coming out of your mouth. Luke chapter 7 verse 39. Now when the Pharisees which had bidden him saw it, he spake within himself. Where is he speaking? Here. Saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that toucheth him, for she is a sinner. What's going on here? He's doubting whether that man was a prophet. He, he didn't believe Jesus was the Son of God. He believed he was a prophet. And then he started doubting that. But he was speaking within his heart. So as we see there, just a few examples of people speaking within their heart. This is where true confession comes from. And as we get down here, because I'm jumping ahead a little bit, when you start questioning people, the truth comes out. They'll say one thing, and then as you start questioning through the scriptures, the real confession comes out here. It starts out here, then you start questioning, and the truth of what they really believe what they really stand for starts to come out. So profess, what does profess mean? Making a statement based off intellect, head knowledge. When I did this, I don't always go off the Webster's 1828 dictionary. When I did this study on profess, professing, profession, kind of like a job, you have a profession. You profess that I'm an electrician, it's my job, it's my career. Okay? Um, you'll realize in the study, basically it's something that starts out, it comes out, and it's, you don't know whether it's up here or down here. And oftentimes it's referring to something that's just up here. It's not down here. But it can still be down here, but you don't know. You haven't tested. You haven't tried it, what they're saying. Are they living it? So Deuteronomy chapter 26, verse 1. And it shall be, when thou art come in and unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance, and possesseth, and dwelleth therein, present tense, they're already there, God has given it to them, that thou shalt take of the first of all the fruit of the earth, which thou shalt bring of the, thy land, that the Lord thy God giveth thee, and shalt put it in a basket, and shalt go unto the place which the Lord thy God shall choose to place his name there. And thou shalt go unto the priest that, the, that shall be in those days, and say unto him, I profess this day unto the Lord thy God, that I am come unto the country which the Lord swear unto our fathers for to give us. And the priest shall take the basket out of thine hand, and set it down before the altar of the Lord thy God. Profess here. It's professing it. It's already happened, and they're saying it. 
But here's the thing. You keep going through the Old Testament. Did they treat that land like God gave it to them? No. Some people would. Some people wouldn't. Certain kings, once it got into the kings, certain kings would treat the land. This is God gave us this land. It's the promised land. We're going to obey God's laws that he gave us. And we're going to treat him as the God that gave us this land. Then you get other kings get in there. They start worshiping false gods. Uh, remember the calf. This is the God that brought you out of Egypt. Okay. So professing here is they're just saying it. Did some people treat it down here? God gave us this land and I'm going to treat them and give them thanks and glory and treat this land as if God, it's God's land that he gave me. Some people probably did, but there was a lot of people that didn't. It was just up here. Okay. They said it because they had to say it. Uh, Matthew, turn to Matthew chapter 721. Now don't get me wrong, it was a command to profess it, but you understand what I'm saying. Profession is just something that comes out here. The evidence will back whether it comes from here or here. Matthew chapter 7 verse 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now notice there it says, saith unto me, capital L, Lord, capital L, Lord, okay. shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven, many will say unto me that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Words work. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will like him unto a wise man which buildeth his house upon a rock. And you can keep going through the parable. But our word profess there. Jesus knows the heart. Knows. He sees it. He knows it. It's not a belief. It's not a guess. I'm just guessing what this person really is. He knows. That's why it says back there. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. It's a fact. You're not one of mine. Okay? Profess or confess. They're two different words. Turn to Romans chapter 1, verse 21. And like I said, as we go through here, we're going to notice there's a lot of works involved compared to uh, professions. When people profess. That's why they use the word profess. They've got to look at the words to see if it's coming from the heart. Uh, the works to see if it's coming from the heart. Romans chapter 1, verse 21. Jesus there, like I said, he knows. It's not a belief. It's not a faith thing. It's not an opinion. He knows. That's why the word profess was used there. Romans 1, 21. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in, her, in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Okay. Professing themselves to be wise, were smart, were educated, were the higher class of intellect. They became fools. Their actions showed otherwise. Okay. We're going to stop there, keep your hand there. Turn to Matthew chapter 21, 23. Here's a good example of someone professing to be wise. These are wise men and we're scholars and everything. And they show themselves to be fools. Yeah. Matthew 21, 23. And when he was come into the temple, the chief priest and the elders of the people came unto him as he was teaching and said, By what authority does, doest thou these things? These are the elders. These are the Pharisees. Right? We're the educated. We're the wise ones. And who gave thee this authority? And Jesus answered and said unto them, I, will, I also will ask you one thing. If you tell me, I and likewise will tell you by what authority I do these things. Remember, Jesus sees the heart. The baptism of John, whence was it? 
from heaven or of men? And they reasoned with themselves, saying, If we say from heaven, he will say unto us, Why did ye not then believe him? They don't believe it came from heaven. But if we say of men, we fear the people, for all hold John as a prophet. So if they speak the truth, they'll get the people mad. If they lie, Jesus will catch them in the lie. Verse 27, And they answered Jesus and said, We cannot tell. And, G and he said unto them, Neither tell I you by what authority I do these things. They came, I'm wise, professing themselves to be wise. We're the elders, we're the Phar Pharisees, and if you read more about how they're always questioning Jesus, testing him, seeing that lamb has any spot or blemish, if you've ever done that study before, uh, they wrote Jesus in like they would the lamb, and now he's got to be tested to make sure there's no spot or blemish, and they're questioning him and everything. They're trying to use their own egg intellect like we're wise and God shows them to be fools they've proved themselves to be fools now notice what they said there we cannot tell was that the truth no they the, the truthful answer as you read that is no we do not believe it came from heaven the baptism of John was from men that's what they believed that's what was in the heart but is that what came out here they lied. We cannot tell. Turn back to Romans chapter 1, verse 23. Let's continue that verse. Remember, foolish heart was darkened, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. And changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, and to birds, and four-footed beasts, and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Right? You'll see that a lot. The life they're living. They professed it, they're professing themselves to be wise, but they became fools. Their foolish heart is darkened. What's going on? They dishonor their own bodies between themselves. The lust of their heart, it comes out. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Change the word of God into a lie. Oh, I'm a King James Bible believer. I'm a King James Bible believer. Then you catch them. That's, that's a profession. Then you catch them over time. They start correcting the King James Bible. They start adding to it, subtracting from it, going to the Greek to try to correct it. Some people have even turned from the King James Bible and now they're saying... Well, any Bible will do. You can use any version. Okay? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. They lie and deceive you, saying, I'm a King James Bible believer, and then over time, out of the abundance of their heart, you'll start noticing they're not Bible believers. They're false. That's an example from what we read there, changing the truth of God into a lie. No greater lie than the, the Trinity. Right? No greater lie in this book, as we get on here, is, and the lie that you find in this book is preaching another Jesus. Lying to the people. This is the real Jesus when they're preaching another Jesus that doesn't line up with Scripture as far as the real Jesus. He lines up with the Antichrist, Satan, but he doesn't line up with the real Jesus of Scripture. 2 Corinthians 9 7. Go ahead and turn there. Every man according as he had purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Notice this purposed in his heart. And it comes out by how they give. They don't, they're not grudge, they don't have a grudge about it. They're not saying, well, I have to do it. It's of uh, a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that ye, always having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. There's the works. As it is written, He hath dispersed abroad, He hath given to the poor, His righteousness remaineth forever. When you donate to a ministry, you do it out of the cherishness of your heart. Okay, You support a ministry with prayer, with encouragement, Encouraging the brethren that are in ministry. 
and you can support them financially. Okay? It's out of a cheerful heart. When you're doing it out of a cheerful heart, with your abundance, remember taking care of your family comes first. Okay? But out of the abundance that God has given you, it becomes a good work. And it's back, backed by it. Okay? Your heart is shown by your works. If you do it grudgingly, like in these battle buildings, you have to give 10%. Uh, your heart's not really in the right place, and you're not doing it for God. You're doing it for men. Now, he that ministered seed to the sower both ministered bread for the food, and multiply your seed sown, and increase the fruit of your righteousness, being enriched in everything to all the want of the saints, but it is abundant also by many thanksgiving unto God. Whilst by the experiments of this ministration they glorify God for your professed subjection unto the gospel of Christ and for the liberal distinction unto them and unto all men and by their prayers for you which long after you for the exceeding grace of God in you. There we see professed subjection unto the gospel. Notice it's professed. They didn't, God didn't use and Paul didn't use uh, confession there. It's professed. Remember, who is this written to? The Corinthians. I did a great study through the Lord. Not pat, I almost sound like patting myself out. God gave me a great study, and I loved doing that study when it was just one-on-one -on -one with me and the Lord about uh, carnal Christians. Okay? Can a Christian be carnal? Carnally minded. Okay? So, remember, this is written to the Corinthians. There's a lot of people who professed in subjection to the gospel, but throughout Corinthians and other books, he's saying you need to obey the gospel. If they are confessing it, he doesn't have to tell them to obey it. It's confessions coming from the heart. They're living it. But this is profession. If you turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 11, 4, they professed subjection unto the gospel of Christ. Then you get to 2 Corinthians 11, 4, it says, For if he that cometh preach another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit, which we have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. What's this an example of? He throws them all together and says they're all professing. Are they all confessing? Are they all true? No. But, he, but you, you know what I'm saying? In order to say it correctly, you say professing. They're all professing. They profess subjection unto the gospel of Christ. Doesn't mean that they all are actually doing it down here with the lives that they're living. And he talks about them. People are bringing in other gospels. They're following another Christ. But they profess to follow the gospel of Christ, the one that Paul preached. And they're not. Okay. That's why it uses the word profess. Some of them were. That's why this is open-ended. Some of them were. But not all of them. The moment someone comes into the play, into the group, that you're not sure of, or you doubt, it becomes prof profess. That's why we say there's professing Bible-believing Christians. Not possessing ones. In other words, they're not confessing from the heart. It's not in the heart. Um, now, quick example real quick of a heart issue on giving. I just wanted to throw this out there because we're talking about the heart up there. On giving, okay, where someone can have something here and say something else, and this one's based on giving. So turn to Acts chapter 5, verse 1. But a certain man named Ananias with Seraph, Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the price, his wife also being privy to it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why hath Satan filled thy heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land? So what's going on here? Everybody's doing this. I feel I have to do this. So I'm going to sell this property. But he kept part of it. It wasn't out of a, great, a grateful heart, as we read earlier. A cheerful heart. Being a cheerful giver. He was doing it because that's what everybody else is doing and I just feel like I have to do this. Four. While it remained, was it not thine own? After it was sold, was it not thine own in thine own power? 
In other words, if you wanted to keep half, keep half and only donate half. He didn't have to lie about it. Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? It started here. Then it came out here. Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. So he lied here, yet here it was different. And Ananias heard these words, fell down, and gave up the ghost, and great fear came on all of them that heard these things. And the young men arose, wound him up, and carried him out, and buried him. And it was about the space of three hours after when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in, and Peter answered unto her, Tell me whether ye sold the land for so much. And she said, Yea, for so much. It was a lie. People can say something. The Bible talks about it. The Bible talks about deception. It talks about lies. Okay. In the time of Jacob's trouble, it talks about uh, deception and lies that are so great and hypocrisy that if it was even possible, the very elect would be deceived. Talking about the 144,000 that are sealed in their forehead. Just because someone says it doesn't mean it's coming from down here. Okay? That's, where the tr that's where you start trying the spirits. Does their works back it up? the life they're living, the stands that they're taking. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. Go ahead and turn to 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. I exhort therefore that, first of all, supplication, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and Honesty. You know what? I skipped something. I'm not perfect. I'm sorry. Let's back up for a second because I left a verse out, which is why we were talking about this. 1 Timothy 2.9. Okay, jump down to 1 Timothy 2.9. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly ray, but which cometh women professing godliness with good works. There's the works to back it up. There's a lot of women professing godliness. Can, can a woman put on all this stuff and still be ungodly? Oh yeah. Right? That's why it says professing. Are there women that dress like this and they're godly women? Absolutely. Once again, it throws them all the bunch. They're all professing godliness. Now let's look at the works with good works. Um, now if you jump back up to where we were reading 1 Timothy 2.1, it starts the whole chapter out with this. I exhort therefore that, first of all, supplication, prayer, intercession, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life, that's the works, in all Godliness and what? Honesty. You mean there's people that are going to profess to be godly? And they're not? Yeah. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and come to, unto the knowledge of the truth. Okay? Professing. It's in parentheses there. When we're reading about the women. Which becometh women professing godliness. They profess it. Are they backing it up with works? Are they dressing that way? Uh, is their works good? Okay. Now I said women can dress that way, but uh, I wonder if that's, I'm supposed to talk about it here. Yeah. Um, had a woman, uh, my ex-wife, that she told me that she believes that you should wear modest apparel, long hair, and you're not to wear pants, the apparel of men. She's supposed to be a modest dress, and she wants to live that way. Now, I failed because I didn't make sure she was already living that way. But when she was around here, she wanted to wear pants, and she wanted to wear um, immodest clothing. And here's the best example. 
as time went by, it finally came out what, her, what was on her heart and not up here. She wasn't just copying the Bible and saying what the Bible said just to say it and be part of a group to please me. It came out of her heart. She said, wearing dresses is a lifestyle choice. When she said that, I knew that's what was coming from her heart. What she said before wasn't coming from her heart. It was coming from up here. She was just saying it. Lying and deceiving. And there's a lot of people out there in this subjection, because we're talking about women, in this instance, a lot of women out there, you talk to them about that, they can't handle God's word. Oh yeah, I believe in God's word and everything. Are you wearing dresses all the time? Whenever possible, are you wearing dresses? Modest dresses. Are you still wearing pants most of the time? Right. You got to do it the here and now, not the I want to, the here and now. But that goes, when you talk about the Bible, it goes about everybody, about different things. Uh, you believe this, then why aren't you doing it? You're professing this, why isn't it being backed by works? Mm -hmm. But that was a good example when I looked in my life of someone that, when I'm trying to tell you and warn you, brothers and sisters of Christ, that you keep trying them and over time the truth will come out. These people, I'm a King James Bible believer, over time, with their words, they're going to start correcting the Bible. A better rendering would be. They're going to add to, they're going to subtract from. Had someone send me a letter, uh, a message under one of my videos, saying how Paul is not a true apostle of Jesus Christ, and his, all the Pauli epistles are just his feelings and opinions, basically. But at first he professed to be a King, uh, not King James, he actually believed in the Geneva Bible. There's problems there. But he professes to be a Christian. I'm a Christian. But with his words, he's not a Christian. Right? He's denying being a Christian, a true Christian. Right? So turn to 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 1. We will continue this on. Let as many servants as are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor that the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. And they that have believing masters, let them not despise them because they are brethren, but rather do them service because they are faithful and beloved, partakers of the benefit. These things teach and exhort. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the doctrines which is according to godliness. See, doctrines, hold to it, action. Right. And, I'm sorry, consent. Let's see, we did look up the word consent. According of mind, agreement, unity of opinion. Right. He is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings. These are evidence of what's really in the heart. Right. Some people might start out saying, okay, we're going to teach wholesome words, the words of our Lord Jesus and the, and the true doctrines. But over time, what happens? Their true self comes out. They draw people in and then pull them away from the word of God. Verse 5, perverse disputing of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. But godliness with contentment is great gain, but we brought nothing into the world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. Don't get me wrong, I believe it's a, Satan's agenda to turn people against this word. But what does he offer his ministers of Satan, you know, these people who put a nice suit and tie and everything, he offers them fleshly things. Mm -hmm gets them to turn on the Word, and gets him, them to draw and work for Satan and draw other people away from the Word of God. Verse 9, and how do they do that? They offer the flesh, and people go for it. Verse 9, but they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some have coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness. Follow. Action. 
godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness, fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hath professed a good profession before many witnesses. And, uh, the gospel, obeying the gospel, uh, when you make a profession, it's something that you do, that you live, it's your livelihood. Okay. You profess a good profession, profession, open de declaration, public avowal or acknowledgement of one's sentiments or belief. Okay. Now, why not the word confess? You profess a good profession. I come out and I say this ministry, God's ministry that he's blessed me with, is Bible-believing, God-fearing ministries. That's a profession, and it's a good profession. Now, if you've watched my videos and you've fallen along, you've realized that it's truth. It's now become a confession. It comes from here. I preach the Word of God, and I fear God. That's why I make my stands regardless of what the cost. I fear God rather than man. I stand against the Trinity, and I stand for the Godhead of the King James Bible. And I've lost um, subscribers. Okay. Uh, Christmas, when I did that Christmas study, I lost a lot of subscribers because I held to the Bible. Okay. Christmas is pagan fully and completely. A Bible-believing, God-fearing man does not celebrate, or woman does not celebrate Christmas. It's pagan in origin. Okay. You just go watch the studies. I made that stand. Okay. It starts out being a sin issue. I don't make it out to be a salvation issue. It's a sin issue. But over time, you know, it can become a salvation issue. Okay. But I lost a lot of subscribers because I fear God rather than man. I'm not going to do something that just pleases everybody. Okay. I'm going to please God first. Okay. My works back up my professing my professing a good profession, being in ministry. Okay. We read up their consent already. According of mind, agreement, unity of option, opinion. When it talked about the consent not to wholesome words. Okay. So we see that there's works involved. Backing it up. That's why it uses the word professed, a good profession. They professed it. Now let's go back to what it says over here. Is this how they are? Oh man of God, flee these things. Are they fleeing those things? Are they following after righteousness? Jesus Christ of the King James Bible. The Bible says, if a man love me, he'll keep my words. Ye are my friends, if you do whatsoever I command you. Okay? Are you following after righteousness? Godliness. And remember what we read earlier, godliness with truth. Not being lies and false. Faith, love, patience, and meekness. I believe this is God's perfect written word. Yet I'm going to correct it. All right? I'm going to change it. I'm going to twist it. Add to and subtract. Okay, are you patient? Meekness. Fighting the good fight of faith. There's good fights that you fight, and there's ones you don't. All right? and what I mean by that is we're supposed to be... I want to try to say it right. We're supposed to be offensively spiritually fighting the good fight of faith but we're not to go out trying to seek physical fights and war with people and force people to be Christians and to believe what we believe okay that's between them and God and it's on them we are to be defensive spiritually and physically okay but fighting that's offense when you go out to fight right we do it spiritually for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Are you fighting the good fight of faith? Okay, lay hold onto eternal life, for you stand firm to the true gospel and obeying the gospel. Okay, this backs up, so it's no longer professing a good profession, it's coming from the heart. It's what I'd say a confession at that point. But, but right now, before you check all these things, if someone comes out and just, it's profession when come, someone comes out and says it, before you check these things. Okay. 1 Timothy 
O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoid profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science falsely so called. This is at the very end of everything we just talked about in 1 Timothy 6, 1 through 12. Science falsely so called. 21, which some professing have erred concerning the faith, grace be with thee, amen. Okay? They're professing, but they're erring from the faith. Just like we're reading up here, they have, they have to profess a good profession before many witnesses. It's a good thing to want to be set in a Bible-believing Christian, Bible-believing, God-fearing Christian woman or man. That's a good professed of a good profession. But it needs to be true. It needs to be coming from here and not up here. Okay? Remember, you can miss heaven by 13 inches. You have the head knowledge, Polly want a cracker, repeating what people say to repeat, or it can make it, and it doesn't make it down here to the heart. True confession. Now, Titus 1.15, go ahead and turn to Titus 1.15. Here it is again that someone's going to be professing something. Unto the pure all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. But even their mind and conscience is defiled. Okay? When you come across somebody that's not a Bible believer and you try to discuss the truth that this King James Bible is God's perfect written word in English and they just completely reject it, nothing is pure. I do not, I, to this day, I still don't believe that someone can truly get saved off these Bible perversions. There's people out there that will say, I did. No, someone came to you, someone had to come to you with God's true word, the true gospel, even though you were using an NIV and whatnot, they came to you with the true gospel and you got saved and shortly after God brought you to this book, His perfect written word. Nobody can stand there and tell me that I got saved in the faith alone crowd with the false gospel that comes from these Bible perversions, and then I came to the King James Bible, but I was saved back then. How can you be saved and not have the true gospel? Not know the real Jesus Christ. Okay. So, unbelieving and nothing is pure. These people, there's no point in discussing the Bible other than to preach the gospel with people who use Bible perversions. There's no point. Don't waste your time doing it. Don't fall into the trap. I threw this in there because I have recently. And um, don't fall into that trap, okay? But even their own mind and conscience is defiled. What's the number one reason people hate this book? Because it calls them out and tells them who they are. Dirty, rotten, filthy, low-down, no-good sinners on their way to hell. And they need a true Savior, Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ of the King James Bible. Okay? They want their sin. They love their sin. They professed, here it is, they profess that they know God, but in works they deny Him. There we see it again. Being abominable and disobedient and unto every good work reprobate. Notice it says good work. They do works that are good. But they're reprobate. Okay? They're putting on a false sense of who they are. That's what the word hypocrite means. It means someone who's trying to show themselves to be somebody they are not. Okay? We read hypocrite in some of these passages. But in works, they deny him. Their works speak. They deny him. What's going on? People get on there. Well, they say Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. That means they're saved. No, it doesn't. Do their works back it up and affirm it? Or do their works deny it? Okay. That's what I've always preached from the very beginning. That was my biggest warning when this whole test came out about the Antichrist, Antichrist challenge. It was going to deceive so many people because it's not just the words. Where's the works to back it up? Okay. Remember, you're supposed to do all things in the name of Jesus Christ, whether in word or deed. Both. It's not just one, it's both. Um, 
The thing is right here, they profess that they know God, but in works they deny Him. When you hit somebody up and they say, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, um, explain this Jesus of yours. Who is Jesus? What is your thought on the Trinity? The true gospel, eternal salvation, eternal security, I mean... Even dispensational teaching. There's people teaching that Jesus wasn't in the Old Testament. He's a created being and was just created when he was born of a Virgin Mary. I did a study, if you want to go watch it, that says the likeness of sinful flesh. That's what was created. He came in the likeness of sinful flesh. But he had a body in the Old Testament and he has a body out into eternity. Okay? He's God Almighty. He was there from the very beginning and he'll be there for all eternity. You ask him these things. They can make a professing that I believe in eternal security, but when you break it down and you start asking them questions about eternal security, trying to compare scripture or scripture with them, and sometimes it doesn't line up. They start coming up, well, there's, you might be able to lose your salvation, and then you can get it back, and you might lose your salvation here. Oh, you got to keep and do good works, you know. Oh, well, we believe in eternal security, but you're not a good Christian if you don't go to church. You're not a Christian at all if you completely reject these Bible buildings. You know, you're lost. You're a heretic. They make it about works. But with their mouth, they confess, oh, you're saved. You're, you're eternal security. Right. Yeah, okay. You sit these people down and you actually confront them. If they say something, good. They can, have, they can profess a good profession. It's a good thing to say Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. But is it a confession or is it a profession? That's when the, the trying the spirits start. Okay? What do they truly believe in? What do they stand for? How are they living their life? Do they believe Jesus Christ is come in the flesh? That he's God? That's what that means. He's God fully and completely. He's going to judge them one day at the judgment seat of Christ. How are they living their life? Oh, it's no big deal. I can live however I want. I can do whatever I want. With their mouth, the heart comes out. Buns of the mouth, the heart speaks. They don't truly believe Jesus Christ is come the flesh. It was just a profession. It wasn't a confession. Right. Now, I'm going to go over profession again. Open decla declaration, public avowal, or acknowledgement of one sentiment or belief. Because profession is mentioned three times in the book of Hebrews. Right. The life you're living, this is my livelihood. Profession. We see that today. What's your profession when people get asked that today? Well, I'm an electrician. Well, I'm a plumber. I'm a contractor. Right. What's our profession? As Bible-believing, God-fearing men and women. Uh, we're called into the ministry of reconciliation. Our, professing, our profession is preaching the Word, living the Word, and standing for the Word. Part of preaching the word is preaching the gospel. Right. Uh, Hebrews 3.1 Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our profession, Christ Jesus, who was faithful to him that appointed him, as also Moses was faithful in all his house. There we see profession. We are called a higher calling. Some people are called into full-time ministry. Some people are called into part-time ministry. We are all called into the ministry of reconciliation to preach the gospel. So we can profess a good profession. Does the gospel we preach line up with Scripture? When we're in part-time or full-time ministry, is our ministry is this God's perfect written word, Jesus Christ, who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Is this the foundation of your ministry? Okay, you can have a good profession, but is it a really a good profession? Are you just professing it, or is it coming from the heart? It's a confession backed by works. Hebrews 4.14 Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into heaven, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. Notice it says hold fast. People are falling away. Now granted, Hebrews is written to the Jews in the time of Jacob's trouble for, for instruction and righteousness today. How many people are holding fast the profession of faith? 
the profession of being a Christian. It's your livelihood. Everything, I always preach this, you go from carnally minded to uh, spiritually minded. It goes from being 100% about the world and the flesh to being 100% about Jesus Christ. Is being a Bible-believing, God-fearing man or woman, is it your livelihood? Is it your profession? Is it how you live? Right. Hold fast. Hebrews 10.23, here it is again. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. For he is faithful that promised. We see it again. Hold fast that profession of faith where, without wavering. You mean people can profess something and then over time their true self comes out, falling away? They're standing for this truth and then they fall away? People say falling away. There's saved people that can fall away. Um, that's still hard for me when I read the Bible. There's sometimes I'm like, yeah, saved people can fall away. But it's the heart issue is the thing that gets to me. God knows the heart, and we're reading this stuff. Is you're supposed to hold fast. You're supposed to obey the gospel. You have people that fall away, and God will correct them, chasten them, and get them back on the right track. And then you have people that fall away, and they stay falling away. They never come back to the truth. They become the enemies of Christ. How can you be truly saved and be the enemy of Christ? To be an enemy of his perfect written word. You see, so there is a great falling away from people professing a good profession. Professing to be Christians, Bible believing. Okay? We're having a big falling away right now. James 1.8 says, A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. How would you know that if you don't start looking at his ways? How he's living his life? I'm a King James Bible believer, but a better ending would be. But I'm a King James Bible believer, but this, this passage really shouldn't be in the Bible because it wasn't in the original Greek and everything. But I'm a King James Bible. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. You look at the works. He says one thing, look at the works. Look at the life he's living. Does it line up? All right. First Timothy four one. Go ahead and turn to First Timothy four one. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. They depart from the faith. In other words, I don't want that. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which God had created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe, of them which believe, and know the truth. To me, this is someone who's a false convert. Right? They've departed from the faith. They want nothing to do with the faith. And then they start deceiving those who believe and know the truth. That are truly saved. God's weeding out and showing us in these last days who's true and who's false. But this big thing of Satan's trying to say you're supposed to have blinders. Okay? They say Jesus Christ is coming in the flesh. They're automatically saved. They say Jesus is the Lord. They're automatically saved. That's it. That's all you do. You, you hurt them. But you're not seeing the works. Don't look at the works. Just hear. Just hear their profession. The Bible says confession, but all you're looking at is profession. That's it. That's all that matters. Uh, no. What are the works to back up that profession? Okay. Hypocrite, a feigning to be what one is not, a concealment of one's real character or motives. See, it says speaking lies in hypocrisy. These people were feigning, faking being Christians. But in the end, their true self came out. Their true heart came out. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 16. And one of the things today, real quick, uh, right there, they were forbidding to marry and command, commanding to abstain from meats. Today, you have people saying you have to go to Babel buildings. Sunday best. Okay. You got to give 10% tithe. 
You have to be phys baptized with water in order to be saved. Okay? All these works, they're not found in Scripture. The baptism of water, John did that. Jesus comes and baptizes us with the Holy Spirit. That's the baptism Paul talks about for today. It's with the Holy Spirit, not with water. Okay? The Jewish people require a sign. You can get baptized, that's fine, and with water as an outward showing. It doesn't save you. That's not the baptism that the Bible's talking about. Right? It's not the baptism that Jesus is talking about towards the end. He's talking about spiritually. The Holy Spirit coming in, you now go from being spiritually dead to spiritually alive. New creature in Christ Jesus. You're now in Christ Jesus. The circumcision made without hands. So you see all these hypocrites come in. I'm a Christian. They put on a good show. But in works, they deny him. They deny Jesus Christ. Why? Because their works please the world. Remember what it said? They speak of the world and the world heareth them. The whole thing about John, the, the Antichrist challenge, but in the book of John, um, 1 John chapter 4, goes on to say they speak of the world and the world heareth them. Jeremiah 23, 16, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you, they make you vain. They speak of visions of their own heart, and not out of the mouth of the Lord. This big thing, pre-time of Jacob's trouble. When I preach pre-time of Jacob's trouble, catching away the body of Christ before the seven years, it's called the time of Jacob's trouble. I'm speaking the word of the Lord, his prophecy. Then you have people going around that are false prophets saying that the body of Christ is going to go into that time period. The Bible says the blessed hope, we're supposed to be seeking Jesus Christ to come down and catch us. That's what caught up means. Not that we're meant to fall, but I always use this as an example. You're walking along and you trip and you're about to fall into a puddle of mud. Someone catches you up so you don't fall into it. What's going on in the Bible? We're getting closer and closer to that time of Jacob's trouble. And there's going to be something that happens that triggers the start of the time of Jacob's trouble. Almost like something to stumble on. And we stumble, and God's like, you're not going into that time period. And he catches us up, caught up. Okay? But you have false prophets going around. False prophets telling you that there really is no hell. Hell's not an eternal. Oh, if there is a hell, it's not eternal. You know, it's the grave. It's just annihilation. Right? Um, you can lose your salvation. And you have to get it back. On and so on and so forth. Okay? Their words. They're speaking out of their heart. Sometimes the words that come out are coming straight from the heart from the get-go. Don't get me wrong. But when it comes to deception, remember if they deceive even the elect in the time of Jacob's trouble, their deception and their lies are going to be so good that if it was possible, it would deceive the elect. The very elect. We're seeing a lot of that deception today. People are being deceived and worshiping Satan as Jesus Christ. They claim Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, but you look at their works, they worship Satan. They don't worship Jesus Christ, the capital Lord Jesus Christ, the Jesus Christ who is come in the flesh. They don't worship him. They don't live for him. Okay? Hopefully this is sinking in to help the brethren understand. They say it, that's the profession. Now, is it backed up by how they live their life, the stands they take? Then it, you can see it's not a profession anymore. It's a confession. It's coming from the heart. It's not up here. Now, bottom line, 1 John 4, 1. Beloved, going back to 1 John 4, verse 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they have God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. We just read about it in Jeremiah 20. 23.16. Many false prophets have gone out in the world. Uh, There's a great teaching of Brother Christ. I can't remember if, if I was watching, uh, it was Brother Brian at King James Video Ministries, but talking about how we're all saints, but we're all prophets too. When you get saved, you become a prophet. 
You say, what do you mean? Prophet is somebody who prophesies something that's going to happen in the future. When you preach the gospel, you prophesy to people that if they reject Jesus Christ, they're going to wind up in hell and then toss into the lake of fire to burn for all eternity. That's a future prophecy. The pre-time of Jacob's trouble, catching away the body of Christ. We're supposed to be looking for that blessed hope. That's a prophecy. Telling people about the time of Jacob's trouble, that seven-year period that's in the future. That's prophecy. The thousand-year reign of Jesus Christ. That's prophecy. Uh, the new heaven and the new earth. Okay? We are all prophets. So you have prophets coming out, and they go against these things. They say they're for these things at first to draw you in. But then their works and their actions, and then their words start to change. And their truth from their heart starts to come out. Okay? So brothers and sisters in Christ that are getting a little mis messed up in this. Okay? Just because someone says something, Satan lies. Okay? He'll mix truth with lies. So he'll say something that's truth, and then he'll later on throw a lie in. Then he'll start pulling you away from that truth. Okay? That's what's going on today. It's so deceptive and deceiving out there. This is your final authority. This is what you're to look through. If you're wearing glasses, if these were glasses, it's what you're looking through here. Not your own eyes, not man's eyes. Okay? When someone says something, that's what the biggest thing today. If they say they're a Christian, they're a Christian. Don't look at their works. Don't look at their actions, what they're standing for. It's not a big deal what Bible they're using, Bible version. Got to keep those blinders on so it's easier for Satan to deceive you. When someone confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, do their works back it up? Are they confessing it or is it a profession? They're just saying it to say it. That's why the Bible, the words have meaning. God chose the word confess because confession comes from the heart. With the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with confession and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Okay? The heart comes out through the mouth when it's, that's called confession. When it's up here, coming out here, it's profession. And then you've got to test, try the spirits. He the spirits will judge all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. We judge things according to the Bible standards, not man's standards. You test that spirit. Is it just up here? Or is it down here? So grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And my love for you, brothers and sisters of Christ, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. The capital L Lord, Jesus Christ. Thank you for watching.